Chapter 158 Vestibular Apparatus Introduction Vestibular apparatus is the part of labyrinth or inner ear. It plays an important role in maintaining posture and equilibrium through statokinetic reflexes. Other part of labyrinth is the cochlea, which is concerned with sensation of hearing. Labyrinth Labyrinth, inner ear, consists of two structures, bony labyrinth membranous labyrinth. Bony labyrinth Bony labyrinth is a series of cavities or channels present in the petros part of temporal bone. Membranous labyrinth is situated inside bony labyrinth. The space between bony labyrinth and membranous labyrinth is filled with a fluid called perilymph or periodic fluid. This introduction vestibular apparatus is the part of labyrinth or inner ear. It plays an important role in maintaining posture and equilibrium through statokinetic reflexes. Other part of labyrinth is the cochlea, which is concerned with sensation of hearing. Labyrinth Labyrinth, inner ear, consists of two structures, bony labyrinth membranous labyrinth. Bony labyrinth Bony labyrinth is a series of cavities or channels present in the petros part of temporal bone. Membranous labyrinth is situated inside bony labyrinth. The space between bony labyrinth and membranous labyrinth is filled with a fluid called perilymph or periodic fluid. This fluid is similar to ECF in composition with large amount of sodium ions. Bony labyrinth encloses membranous labyrinth, Fig 158.1. Membranous labyrinth Membranous labyrinth is formed by membranous tubules and sacs. It consists of two portions, cochlea, which is concerned with sensation of hearing, Chapter 172, Vestibular apparatus, which is concerned with posture and equilibrium. Membranous labyrinth is filled with a fluid called endolymph or otic fluid. Endolymph is similar to ICF in composition. It has large quantity of potassium ions. Functional anatomy of vestibular apparatus Vestibular apparatus is formed by three semicircular canals and otolith organ, vestibule. Semicircular canals Semicircular canals are the tubular structures placed at right angles to each other. Because of this type of arrangement, semicircular canals represent the three axes of rotation, i.e. vertical, anteroposterior and transverse axes. Semicircular canals are named according to the situation as follows, anterior or superior canal posterior canal lateral or horizontal or external canal. Anterior and posterior canals are situated vertically and the lateral canal is situated in horizontal plane, Fig 158.2. When the head is tilted forward at an angle of 30 degrees, lateral canals of both the sides are at horizontal plane parallel to earth with the convexities directed outward and a little backward. Anterior canals are at vertical plane and directed forward and outward at 45 degrees. Posterior canals are also at vertical plane, but directed backward and outward at 45 degrees. Therefore, the plane of position of anterior canal of one side is parallel to the plane of posterior canal of opposite side. Ampulla There are two ends for each semicircular canal. One end is narrow and the other end is enlarged. The enlarged end is called ampulla. Ampulla contains the receptor organ of semicircular canals known as crista ampullaris. Ampulla of all the three canals and narrow end of horizontal canal open directly into the utricle. The narrow ends of anterior and posterior canals open into utricle jointly, by forming the common crus. Thus, all the three semicircular canals open into utricle by means of five openings. Utricle opens into saccule. Otolith organ or vestibule Otolith organ or vestibule is formed by utricle and saccule. Often utricle and saccule are together called otoliths. Utricle communicates with saccule through utriculosicular duct. Saccule communicates with cochlear duct through ductus reuniens. Another duct called endolymphatic duct arises from utriculosicular duct. It ends in a bag-like structure called endolymphatic sac, which lies on the cranial surface of Petro's bone. Receptor organ in vestibular apparatus Receptor organ in semicircular canal is called crista ampullaris and that in otolith organ is called macula. These receptor organs contain the proprioceptors. Receptor organ in semicircular canal, 
Crista ampullaris Crista ampullaris is a crest-like structure situated inside the ampulla of semicircular canals. The crest is formed by a receptor epithelium, neuroepithelium, which consists of hair cells, supporting cells, and secreting epithelial cells. The secreting epithelial cells secrete the ground substance, proteoglycan. These cells are arranged in planum semilunatum, group of epithelial cells, around hair cells, fig 158.3. Hair cells Hair cells are the receptor cells, proprioceptors, of Crista ampullaris. There are two types of hair cells, type I and type II hair cells. Hair cells of semicircular canals, utricle, and saccule receive both afferent and efferent nerve terminals. Type I hair cells Type I hair cells are flask-shaped. Afferent nerve terminates in the form of a calyx that surrounds the cell body. Efferent nerve terminal ends on the surface of calyx. Type II hair cells These cells have a cylindrical or test tube shape. Both afferent and efferent nerve fibers terminate on the surface cell body without forming calyx. Cilia of hair cells Apex of each hair cell has a cuticular plate. From this plate, about 40 to 60 cilia arise, which are called stereocilia. Each stereocilium is attached at its tip to the neighboring taller one by means of a fine process called tip link. Because of the tip links, all the stereocilia are held together. One of the cilia is very tall, which is named as kinocilium, fig 158.4. Stereocilia. Each stereocilium is attached at its tip to the neighboring taller one by means of a fine process called tip link. Because of the tip links, all the stereocilia are held together. One of the cilia is very tall, which is named as kinocilium, fig 158.4. Cupula from Crista ampullaris, a dome shaped gelatinous structure extends up to the roof of the ampulla. It is known as cupula. Cilia of hair cells are projected into cupula. Receptor organ in otolith organ, macula receptor organ in otolith organ is called macula. Like Crista ampullaris, macula is also formed by neuroepithelium and supporting cells. Neuroepithelium of macula also has two types of hair cells, the type I and type II hair cells, fig 158.5. Otolith membrane like Crista ampullaris, Macula is also covered by a gelatinous membrane called otolith membrane. It is a flat structure and not dome-shaped like cupula. The stereocilia and kinocilium of each hair cell are embedded in otolith membrane. Otolith membrane contains some crystals, which are called ear dust, otoconia, or staticonia. Otoconia are mainly constituted by calcium carbonate. Situation of macula Situation of macula is different in utricle and saccule. Macula in utricle in utricle, the macula is situated in horizontal plane, so that the cilia from hair cells are in vertical direction. Macula in saccule In the case of saccule, macula is in vertical plane and the cilia are in horizontal direction. Nerve supply to vestibular apparatus impulses from the hair cells of crista ampullaris and maculae are transmitted to medulla oblongata and other parts of central nervous system, CNS, through the fibers of vestibular division of vestibulocochlear, 8 cranial, nerve. First order neuron First order neurons of the sensory pathway are bipolar in nature. The soma of bipolar cells is present in vestibular or scarpa ganglion, which is situated in the internal auditory meatus. Dendrites of bipolar cells reach the receptor organs, i.e. crista ampullaris and maculae in vestibular apparatus. Branches of the dendrites have close contact with basal part of hair cells. Dendrites terminating on type I hair cells are comparatively larger than those ending on type II hair cells. Axons of the first order neurons, bipolar cells, form vestibular division of vestibulocochlear nerve. These fibers reach the medulla oblongata and terminate in vestibular nuclei. These nerve fibers are called primary vestibular fibers. Vestibular nuclei There are four vestibular nuclei in the medulla oblongata, viz. Superior, inferior, lateral, and medial nuclei. Most of the primary vestibular fibers reaching superior and medial nuclei come from crista ampule laris of semicircular canals. 
lateral vestibular nucleus receives fibers mainly from maculae of otolith organ and inferior vestibular nucleus receives fibers from both crista ampullaris and maculae. Efferent nerve fibers to hair cells Some neurons in vestibular nuclei send efferent fibers, which run back to the hair cells along with primary vestibular fibers, see above. It is believed that these efferent fibers to hair cells provide tonic inhibition of hair cells. Fibers to cerebellum Fibers from some bipolar cells reach cerebellum directly and terminate in flocculonodular lobe or the vestigial nucleus in cerebellum. Second order neurons Second order neurons of this pathway are located in the four vestibular nuclei. Axons from vestibular nuclei form the secondary vestibular fibers. Secondary vestibular fibers form four tracts, vestibulo-ocular tract, vestibulo-spinal tract, vestibulo-orticular tract, vestibulo-cerebellar tract. Vestibulo-ocular tract fibers from superior, medial, and inferior vestibular nuclei descend downwards for short distance along with vestibulo-spinal tract. Afterwards, these fibers ascend through the medial longitudinal fasciculus and terminate in the nuclei of three, four, and six cranial nerves, thus forming vestibulo-ocular tract. This tract is concerned with movements of eyeballs in relation to the position of the head. Vestibulospinal tract fibers from lateral nucleus descend downwards and form the vestibulospinal tract. Some fibers from this nucleus ascend upward and join medial longitudinal fasciculus. Fibers of vestibulospinal tract are involved in reflex movements of head and body during postural changes. Vestibulorticular tract Some fibers from vestibular nuclei reach the reticular formation of brainstem forming reticulospinal tract. These fibers are concerned with the facilitation of muscle tone. Vestibulocerebellar tract Some fibers arising from all four vestibular nuclei form vestibulocerebellar tract and terminate in flocculonodular lobe and vestigial nuclei of cerebellum. This tract is involved in coordination of movements according to body position. Functions of vestibular apparatus Receptors of semicircular canals give response to rotatory movements or angular acceleration of the head. And receptors of utricle and saccule give response to linear acceleration of head. Thus, the vestibular apparatus is responsible for detecting the position of head during different movements. It also causes reflex adjustments in the position of eyeball, head, and body during postural changes. Functions of semicircular canals Semicircular canals are concerned with angular, rotatory, acceleration. Semicircular canals sense the rotational movement. Each semicircular canal is sensitive to rotation in a particular plane. Superior semicircular canal Superior semicircular canal gives response to rotation in anteroposterior plane, transverse axis, i.e. front to back movements like nodding the head while saying yes, yes. Horizontal semicircular canal Horizontal semicircular canal gives response to rotation in horizontal plane, vertical axis, i.e. side-to-side -side movements, left-to-right or right-to-left, like shaking the head while saying no, no. Posterior semicircular canal Posterior semicircular canal gives response to rotation in the vertical plane, anteroposterior axis, by which head is rotated from shoulder to shoulder. Mechanism of stimulation of receptor cells in semicircular canal At the beginning of rotation, receptor cells are stimulated by movement of endolymph inside the semicircular canals. However, receptors are stimulated only at the beginning and at the stoppage of rotatory movements. And during rotation at a constant speed, these receptors are not stimulated. When a person rotates in clockwise direction in horizontal plane, vertical axis, horizontal canal moves in clockwise direction. But there is no corresponding movement of endolymph inside the canal at the beginning of rotation. Because of the inertia, endolymph remains static. This phenomenon causes relative displacement of endolymph in the direction opposite to that of the rotation of head. That is, the fluid is pushed in anti-clockwise direction. Thus, in the right horizontal semicircular canal, the endolymph flows towards the ampulla and in the left canal, the fluid moves away from the ampulla, fig 158.6. Movement of endolymph in semicircular canal, in turn causes corresponding movement of gelatinous cupula. Thus, 
in the right horizontal canal, the cupula moves towards the ampulla. Whereas in left canal cupula moves away from ampulla. In any semicircular canal, when cupula moves towards the ampulla, stereocilia of hair cells are pushed towards kinocilium leading to stimulation of hair cells. When cupula moves away from ampulla, the stereocilia are pushed away from kinocilium and hair cells are not stimulated. Thus, at the commencement of rotation in clockwise direction around vertical axis, hair cells at ampulla of horizontal canal in right ear are stimulated. But, the hair cells in horizontal canal of left ear are not stimulated. Because of stimulation, the hair cells in right horizontal canal send information, impulses, through sensory nerve fibers to vestibular, cerebellar, and reticular centers. Now, these centers send proper instructions to various muscles of the body to maintain equilibrium of the body during angular acceleration, rotation. On the other hand, rotation in anti-clockwise direction causes stimulation of hair cells in ampulla of horizontal canal in left ear only. Hair cells of horizontal canal in right ear are not stimulated. Stimulation of hair cells in left ear is followed by the process as in the case of clockwise rotation. Electrical potential in hair cells, mechanotransduction Mechanotransduction is a type of sensory transduction, chapter 139, in the hair cell, receptor, by which the mechanical energy, movement of cilia in hair cell, caused by stimulus is converted into action potentials in the vestibular nerve fiber. Resting membrane potential in hair cells is 60 MV. Movement of stereocilia of hair cells towards kinocilium causes opening of mechanically gated potassium channels, Chapter 3. It is followed by influx of potassium ions from endolymph which contains large amount of potassium ions. Potassium ions cause development of mild depolarization in hair cells up to 50 MV. This type of depolarization is called receptor potential. Besides potassium ions, calcium ions also enter the hair cells from endolymph. Receptor potential in hair cells is non-propagative. But, it causes generation of action potential in nerve fibers distributed to hair cells. Depolarization of hair cells causes them to release a neurotransmitter, which generates the action potential in the nerve fibers. It is believed that the probable neurotransmitter may be glutamate. Movement of stereocilia in the opposite direction, away from kinocilium, causes hyperpolarization of hair cells. Calcium may play a role in the development of hyperpolarization. Hyperpolarization in hair cells stops generation of action potential in the nerve fibers, Fig 158.7. Adaptation of receptors in semicircular canal during rotation hair cells of crista ampullaris generate impulses even at rest. But, the frequency of discharge is very low at resting conditions. It is about 50 to 100 impulses per minute. At the commencement of rotation, discharge of impulses reaches a higher frequency of 600 to 800 per minute, depending upon the speed of rotation. However, the rapid discharge of impulses lasts only for the first 20 to 25 seconds of rotation. Afterwards, even if rotation continues, the frequency of impulses falls back to the resting level. It is because of the adaptation of receptors during continuous rotation. Cause for adaptation of receptor cells at the onset of rotation, endolymph inside the semicircular canal does not move along with semicircular canal because of inertia of the fluid. So semicircular canal moves leaving the endolymph behind, which is like moving in the opposite direction. Now the endolymph is pushed into ampulla towards the utricle. It causes stimulation of hair cells but, after about 20 seconds due to the accumulation of endolymph, a pressure is developed in ampulla. Due to the back pressure, endolymph starts moving away from ampulla, i.e. it starts moving along with semicircular canal at the same speed. It causes adaptation of the hair cells. Hair cells of crista ampullaris of vertical semicircular canals are stimulated during the rotation of head in anteroposterior or transverse axis. However, the mechanism involved is similar to that of the hair cells of crista ampullaris of horizontal canals. 
nystagmus nystagmus is the rhythmic oscillatory involuntary movements of eyeball. It is common during rotation. It is due to the natural stimulatory effect of vestibular apparatus during rotational acceleration. Nystagmus occurs both in physiological and pathological conditions. Vestibuloocular reflex and nystagmus Nystagmus is a reflex phenomenon that occurs in order to maintain the visual fixation. Since the movements of eyeballs occur in response to stimulation of vestibular apparatus this reflex is called vestibuloocular reflex. Movement of eyeball during nystagmus Nystagmus has two components of movement, which occur alternately, slow component quick component. Slow component at the beginning of rotation, since eyes are fixed at a particular object, point, eyeballs rotate slowly in the direction opposite to that of rotation of the head. It is called slow component of nystagmus. It is due to vestibuloocular reflex. This reflex is because of labyrinthine impulses reaching the ocular muscles via vestibular nuclei and 3, 4, and V cranial nerves. Quick component when the slow movement of eyeballs is limited, the eyeballs move to a new fixation point in the direction of rotation of head. This movement to a new fixation point occurs with a jerk. So, it is called the quick component. Quick component of nystagmus is due to the activation of some centers in brain stem. Post-rotatory nystagmus nystagmus that occurs immediately after stoppage of rotation is called post-rotatory nystagmus. It is due to movement of cupula in opposite direction caused by the endolymph, when rotation is stopped. Post-rotatory nystagmus can be demonstrated by Barani chair, see below for details. Post-rotatory reactions after the end of rotatory movement, two reactions occur, feeling of rotation in opposite direction post-rotatory nystagmus. Feeling of rotation in the opposite direction when rotation in clockwise direction is stopped suddenly, Endolymph moves in the direction of rotation in right horizontal semicircular canal although the semicircular canal stops moving. So, cupula moves away from utricle. However, in the case of left horizontal semicircular canal, endolymph moves into ampulla. There, it pushes cupula towards the utricle and stimulates the hair cells in crista of left canal. It causes feeling of rotation in opposite direction when the rotation is stopped. Post-rotatory nystagmus it is already explained above. Nystagmus in pathological conditions nystagmus is very common in lesions of cerebellum and lesions of brainstem involving vestibular nuclei or vestibular nerve. It also occurs due to the damage of labyrinth. Function of otolith organ otolith organ is concerned with linear acceleration and detects acceleration in both horizontal and vertical planes. Utricle response during horizontal acceleration and saccule response during vertical acceleration. Function of utricle position of hair cells of macula helps utricle to respond to horizontal acceleration. In utricle, the macula is situated in horizontal plane with the hair cells in vertical plane, fig 158.5. While moving horizontally, because of inertia the otoconia move in opposite direction and pull the cilia of hair cells resulting in stimulation of hair cells. For example, when the body moves forward, the otoconia fall back in otolith membrane and pull the cilia of hair cells backward. Pulling of cilia causes stimulation of hair cells. Hair cells send information, impulses, to vestibular, cerebellar, and reticular centers. These centers in turn send instructions to various muscles to maintain equilibrium of the body during the forward movement. Function of saccule macula of saccule is situated in vertical plane with the cilia of hair cells in horizontal plane. While moving vertically, as in the case of utricle, otoconia of saccule move in opposite direction and pull the cilia resulting in stimulation of hair cells. For example, while climbing up, the otoconia move down by pulling the cilia downwards. It stimulates the hair cells, which in turn send information to the brain centers. And the action follows as in the case of movement in horizontal plane. Role of otolith organ in resting position during resting conditions, in the absence of head movement, hair cells are stimulated continuously because of the pulling of otoconia by gravitational force. 
Stimulation of hair cells produces reflex movements of head and limbs for the maintenance of posture in relation to gravity. Because of this function, the receptors of otolith organ are called gravity receptors. Effects of stimulation of semicircular canals under experimental conditions, semicircular canals can be stimulated by two methods, rotational movement caloric stimulation. Rotational movement semicircular canal can be stimulated by rotational movement with the help of Barani chair. Barani chair Barani chair is a revolving chair. The subject is seated on this chair with the head tilted forward at 30 degrees. Both the eyes are closed. The chair is rotated at a speed of 30 rpm for about 20 seconds and then stopped. Effects of stimulation of semicircular canals by rotation Stimulation of semicircular canals during rotation in Barani chair produces some effects both during rotation and after the end of rotation. Post-rotatory reactions 20 seconds after the stoppage of rotation in Barani chair, following reactions occur, post-rotatory nystagmus, eyes are closed during rotation by Barani chair. When eyes are opened after the sudden stoppage of rotation, Nystagmus starts. Post rotatory nystagmus exists for about 30 seconds. Dizziness, immediately after stoppage of rotation, there is a feeling of unsteadiness. It is called the dizziness. Dizziness is associated with feeling of rotation in the opposite direction. Vertigo, after the end of rotation, there is a feeling of environment whirling around or, there is a feeling of rotation of the person himself. Other effects, rotation for a longer period causes nausea and vomiting. Blood pressure falls by about 10 to 15 mm Hg. And, heart rate is reduced by 10 to 12 beats per minute. Reaction during rotation with opened eyes If Barani chair is rotated with opened eyes, nystagmus occurs continuously throughout the period of rotation. Caloric stimulation Semicircular canals can be stimulated by passing hot or cold water into the ear by using a syringe. The transmission of change in temperature into labyrinth alters the specific gravity of endolymph. This in turn causes movement of cupula and stimulation of receptor cells. Effects of caloric stimulation Stimulation of semicircular canals by thermal stimulus develops nystagmus, vertigo, and nausea. During the treatment for ear infection, Temperature of fluid instilled into the ear must be equal to body temperature, so that, such symptoms of caloric stimulation are avoided. Applied Physiology, Effect of Labyrinthectomy Bilateral Labyrinthectomy Removal of labyrinthine apparatus on both sides leads to complete loss of equilibrium. Equilibrium could be maintained only by visual sensation. Postural reflexes are severely affected. There is loss of hearing sensation too. Unilateral labyrinthectomy removal of labyrinthine apparatus on one side causes less effect on postural reflexes. However, severe autonomic symptoms occur. Autonomic symptoms are due to unbalanced generation of impulses from the unaffected labyrinthine apparatus. Symptoms are nausea, vomiting and diarrhea. During movement, the symptoms become very severe. The unaffected labyrinthine apparatus starts compensating the loss of functions of affected labyrinth. Hence, the symptoms disappear slowly after a few months. Motion sickness definition Motion sickness is defined as the syndrome of physiological response during movement, travel, to which the person is not adapted. It can occur while traveling in any form of vehicle like automobile, ship, aircraft, or spaceship. Motion sickness that occurs while traveling in a watercraft is called seasickness. Cause motion sickness is due to excessive and repeated stimulation of vestibular apparatus. Excessive and repeated stimulation of vestibular apparatus occurs because of rapid and repeated change in rate of motion while traveling rapid and repeated change in direction. Psychological factors such as anxiety about the unfamiliar modes of travel may be added up to cause motion sickness. Symptoms Nausea Vomiting Sweating Diarrhea Pallor Paleness Excess Salivation Discomfort Headache Disorientation Prevention Responses of Motion Sickness can be prevented by avoiding greasy and bulky food before travel and by taking antiemetic drugs, drugs preventing nausea and vomiting. In experimental animals, motion sickness is abolished by bilateral removal of vestibular apparatus, 
sectioning of vestibular nerve or ablation of flocculonodular lobe, 